professional football show. Welcome aboard on this, let's see, Tuesday afternoon. Right? How you doing, man? Get yourself ready for an opportunity. Talk some football with us here. That's what we got going on, man. And it is wall to wall. Last night, that John Gruden story was just unbelievable as it was unraveling. We will talk Buccaneers and Eagles. We will also talk about Dallas Goddard and his COVID-19 positive test. I'm not going to talk to you about vaccinations here because I don't talk about people's health. I don't really care. It's not my business. It's not what we do here. But I am going to talk about the NFL's protocols on if you are vaccinated, why are you holding these people to some sort of crazy standard when the CDC doesn't even do that? Are you not watching these stadiums on Saturday and Sunday? These packed houses? Where's the NFL coming up with these standards? Or is this something by state? We'll hit on that. We'll talk a little bit about it. But before we get into Buccaneers and Eagles, I want to talk a little bit about John Gruden. You know, the cancel culture is out in force now. It's funny. You've got a quarterback that sits in Houston who's making $30 million a year with 24 sexual harassment cases potentially against him or sexual assault cases. And I don't see any emails or Instagram messages that the NFL has released. Why is the NFL releasing only John Gruden's name? ESPN is involved in this. Washington is involved in this. Daniel Snyder is involved in this. Why are we only after one guy? Okay, why are we only after one guy? Dev just said fresh cut with big seals. I don't know, man. I think it's the camera view here, Dev. And I'm talking to Dev, by the way, all you guys that come aboard the program. You know, as I say, we always, you know, come prepared. But you guys add a lot of content to the show and actually a lot of fun to the show, too. So how are you guys making this whole story and taking this story with John Gruden? Look, John Gruden had to be fired, and I'll tell you why. Because you have too many snowflakes in the world today. Okay. And John Gruden talking like that publicly, he canceled himself. You, 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 you can't be in a workplace when you have people with different takes, feelings, how they see things. You've got to almost be a politician inside your locker room. Whether it's locker room talk, and that's, that's kind of what I call it. John was doing locker room talk, and do you know who he was talking with? CEOs of major companies. Executives in the Washington organization he was talking to, probably other executives. Remember, there were 650,000 emails that the National Football League went through when it came to this investigation of the Washington team and Daniel Snyder. Funny, the only name that's come out so far has been Gruden. So Gruden resigns, and rightfully so. We were talking, Krause and I, before we went on the air. Okay, Dan, really? Emails from people? Yes. Unfortunately, because you're leading 53 men, you're the face of a franchise. You can't have that inside your locker room. You can't have that outside of your locker room. You just can't have it, man. And John Gruden basically canceled himself. Some of you are going to say, dude, really? Things that were said 11 years? Yeah, man. But at the end of the day, you know, you just can't be a CEO and say those things today. We are in a different era. Okay? Shakur says, Sills, it's like you can't say things anymore or you're going to get canceled. Absolutely. Absolutely. Shakur, if you're kidding around with somebody nowadays, sarcasm on Twitter or sarcasm anywhere is going to be misconstrued as truths. Look at my friend Tony Bruno, for instance. How many people truly believe Tony Bruno's a racist? I know Tony Bruno 27 years. Tony Bruno is the furthest thing from a racist. Furthest thing from a racist. Tony said something about LeBron James and reading. Cancel culture went after him and whacked him right at the knees. Tony was so upset with the profession 
he got out of it for a while and he was fed up with it because you can't say anything any longer. Or what's more, I think, important here, they pick and choose which guys can survive and which guys can't. Howard Stern can do blackface and Howard Stern can have end jokes and say the N word on his show. And it's almost like that never happened. It's almost like it never happened, right? Stern made a living on dropping the M-bomb on the air. On the air, he used to do it. Or Jimmy Kimmel or Jimmy Fallon. Those guys doing blackface. You remember that Jimmy Kimmel bit that he did? And he was Carl Malone, painted his face all black, and he was even doing the impression. He was doing stuff like that. And you're like, wow. And that guy survived that, and he's a late-night host in Hollywood. I mean, but me, I make a mistake and say something, I'm a racist. When you know full well I'm not. I even just said it numerous times. I made a mistake, dude. I don't believe in that kind of language. Dev says it's a sensitive world that we live in. It is. Joey B, agree 100%, Dan. Great points on Stern and Kimmel. Listen, how about the, um, the guy who runs Canada, did a blackface? How about the, the rainy governor of Virginia that's in a tight race now? Well, that wasn't me, I don't think. Wink, wink. You're like, wait a minute, bro. That looked like you. And he survived it. How about all the crap that Clinton did? But see, if anybody on the side of the Republican side of the table does anything like that, oh, my God, Tucker Carlson's a racist. It's crazy. So John Gruden should have known the room. Here, watch this. Like I said, Krause and I were hitting on this. Really, emails, private emails going back and forth with people, and should it be an issue, even when he wasn't in the league? It should be, and here's why, okay? Got to know the place you're in today. You have to understand you can't talk like that any longer. You may want to kid around, and you may want to be able to talk to your boys the way you want to talk to them, but if somebody's got an ax to grind, it'll come back to haunt you, man. It always comes back to haunt you. Always comes back. Trevor just asked me, any idea who leaked these emails? Can we say it's Russia? Thank you. <laughs> Bob Money says, we have Urban Meyer, or excuse me, Urban Cowboy. Thank you. Nickname. What is John Gruden's nickname going to be? I don't know, man. Huh. We got to come up with a good one. Grouchy Gruden or something. <laughs> man, he, hey, I'll tell you what. He was like the Don Rickles of head football coaches in the NFL. Smile says Roger Goodell leaked them. I'm going to tell you guys a story here, and you tell me if you subscribe this story. By the way, we'll get into Bucks and Eagles. We'll talk about Dallas Goddard, too, getting COVID-19. I thought he was vaccinated. Okay? I thought he was vaccinated. So do the vaccinations work or not? I don't know. I, I'm not here to go over that, but I want to go over the NFL protocols. But here's the thing. I'm going to tell you guys a story, and I'm going to tell you the full story. So my relationship with Bruce Allen goes back 40 years. I've known Bruce Allen, the former president of the Washington team, since I was a kid. Muhammad, how you doing, brother? And he and I have been friends for a long time. He tried signing me as an agent with this guy, Eric Metz. They had an agency years ago when I was in college at the University of Miami, okay? So I knew Bruce back in those days. Well, all through the years, Bruce has worked himself up through the chain to become a general manager and then eventually become president of the Washington team. Well, when I got out to the Bay Area, Bruce and I reconnected. He was working himself up. He was already the capologist for the Raiders. and Really, the general manager of the Raiders at the time was Al Davis. And nobody was going to go in there over Al Davis or Ken Herrick's head when it came to personnel decisions. I'll never forget, guys. I get a call from Al Davis. 
and we had started sparking up a friendship. And then he personally hired me for the broadcast team when the Raiders moved back to Oakland. I used to meet and have lunch with Al Davis every Wednesday. And I would go over and we would talk and we would talk football. We would talk personnel. We would talk in my relationship. One time, hey, just real quick. One time, my wife and I were at the Palm Restaurant. Al Davis was in there. We sat down and had dinner with him. Why don't you name your baby after me, Al? I'm like, Al, it's Danielle. It's after my grandfather. It's like, all right. So used to fly to Vegas all the time with Al. We used to go see fights and all that. We had a great and wonderful relationship. And Amy Trask and I were actually talking about it on Twitter last night. So through this process, he calls me up. He goes, I want you to come over here. I'm interviewing someone. And I think Joe Bugle had just been fired as Raider coach. I think it was Bugle. I don't, I, maybe it was, I think it was Bugle. So I'm in there. This young kid walks in. He's 32 years old. It's John Gruden, the Eagles offensive coordinator. He comes walking in. He had just flown in from Philly. And Al started talking to him about formations and sets and packaging and all that stuff offensively. And John got up at the chalkboard and talked for about an hour and a half, just drawing plays up. It was pretty impressive. John walks out of the room. Al looks over at me and he goes like this. What do you think? I go, I'll tell you what, he's going to have a complex playbook. Okay, he's going to have a complex playbook. Do you know what I told Al? I said this to him. I go like this. If Ray Rhodes thinks he's a good dude, sign me up. Ray Rhodes hired John Gruden to be the Eagles offensive coordinator. Put that in the back of your head. Ray Rhodes. I think Ray Rhodes won the NFL Coach of the Year award, didn't he, in Philly one year? So, I mean, I really, I, I, I was, Ray thought he was good. I, I have great respect for Ray Rhodes. So, fast forward, he gets the job. John does a hell of a job, but John always got pissed. You know why he got pissed? He got pissed because he didn't have personnel, any input in the personnel, like none. It was all Ken Herrick, and it was all Al Davis. Those guys had all the say. John started conspiring with Bruce Allen. And they started conspiring to get out of there and out of his contract that he had just signed. Al had just given him a contract extension. They get his agent. They work a deal out. And they work a deal with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They had to give draft choices. Remember all those draft choices? Al Davis used to call me up personally and do this. Dan, this guy is a scumbag. This guy is a backstabber. This guy's the biggest backstabber. He and that no good guy, Bruce Allen. I mean, he used to go off and drop F-bombs and everything on those two. So when Mark Davis hired him as the head coach, I was floored. I tried to bring Amy Trask into the conversation a couple uh, months ago, she goes, I don't want anything to do with this. You guys got to follow me on where we're going here because I'm going to tell you where I think this is all coming from on John Gruden. Nobody knows this story, but me and a handful of guys, Bruce Allen knows it. When I was in Tampa doing morning drive, Al Davis used to have Fudgy, his assistant, call me and get on the phone with me. And do you know what they used to say? They used to go like this. Hey, how's Charlie Gardner doing? Hey, how's Ricky Dudley? Has Tim Brown got anything left? They were asking me to spy on the Bucks, And I was friends, and I am friends with Bruce Allen. we got to remember this. John Gruden, once he got to Tampa, became friends with the Outback founders, Bob Bashan and Chris Sullivan, the founder of Hooters, Ed Drotsty, Nick Reeder, who's a dear friend of mine, who's the money man for Outback Steakhouse. And these guys were like the Tampa Mafia. These guys were thick as thieves, these guys. Big-time friends. And Bruce Allen introduced them because you know why? Who's in the building there? Who becomes a ball boy? Sean McVay. Sean McVay's the ball boy. John McVay 
the former head coach of the Giants, and John McVay, the guy who helped build the 49ers, went to Tampa, became a scout, asked John to give his son or his grandkid a job. By the way, the executive director of the Outback Bowl, why'd you th- why do you think John Gruden, every New Year's Day, called the Outback Bowl? Because John McVay, who's in these emails, according to the New York Times, hired John and made sure ESPN had John do that game. John McVay is the highest paid executive for any bowl game. He makes a million two. Million two. The rest of these guys are making like seventy five to a hundred thousand. This guy makes over a million. And all these guys, how do you think John Gruden? You don't think ESPN would have put him on the Rose Bowl? Hang on here now. I had him on the Outback Bowl. I used to work the sidelines for the game. Let's connect the dots like Joey B saying. Let's move forward. ESPN is in this thing too. You have the executive director of the Outback Bowl. You have the founders of Outback. You had the founders of Hooters, all personal friends of mine. And you had Bruce Allen, who used his Washington team email on all of these conversations. John uses private. Bruce didn't. That's why they were able legally to go through the emails and see these crazy guys talking. This is a boys club here. And by the way, those guys have done so much for the Tampa community. They're great dudes, man. Ed Drosky gets millions to a hospital in Gainesville every single year. Bob Bashin and Chris Sullivan are stand-up guys. They started this company called PDQ. Guess who was the personal spokesman for PDQ? Tim Tebow. Tebow is on some of these emails. You guys don't know this. I know the story. So I knew what was going on, but I knew how they talked. Follow along with me here. How do you think Jay Gruden got the job in Washington? Through Bruce Allen and John Gruden. Jay got that job. Then they brought Doug Williams in. Doug's still there. Then when the job came open in Los Angeles, Sean got the job because John spoke for him, Bruce Allen spoke for him, and all of those major companies, Outback Steakhouse, the Hooters people, um, Arthur Blank, who's friends with those guys as well at Home Depot, all stood up for Sean to get the job because he too was 32, just like John Gruden was. So that's how these guys are all connected. Now, Al Davis dies. You guys remember that meeting they had about five years ago in Houston where relocation came out and said, okay, the Raiders and the Chargers are going to move to Carson, California. And those teams are going to move to Carson, California. Do you remember what Jerry Jones and Bob Kraft and what Paul Allen was alive back in the day did? They parachuted into a meeting in Los Angeles and said, fuck that. Chargers and Rams are going to move to Los Angeles because Kroenke can stroke a check. We're not going to have to worry about taxes and putting it on a ballot. Stan had to write the check out of his Walmart money and out of his development money so to build that stadium so far. Los Angeles was never going to put a stadium on a ballot. They were never going to get it done. And the Spanoses are cheap, and the Raiders were broke then. So what does Mark Davis do? He stuns the NFL. They wanted him to move to Santa Clara. They wanted the Raiders in the same building. Why do you think that area became shrinked from 150 miles to 70? So that they could put the Raiders, and they put that stadium in Raiders country. Santa Clara is so far removed from the um, Candlestick Park where the 49ers played, they were forcing the Raiders. The Raiders go like this. I'll never move in with the 49ers. It's a big-time rivalry. 
what does he do? He goes to Vegas and Carolyn Goodman, the mayor of Las Vegas, gets all the politicians together. They put $750,000 on the table. And then the NFL has to put up $350 million for the stadium on a loan that could be deferred out 20 years. He's got his billion to build the thing. They was all against the NFL. All those owners were totally against that. They wanted him in that stadium in Santa Clara. Well, he ended up biting them in the ass. And I'm telling you this. There were people in Park Avenue who had a cow with this. And that's why those emails have been released. It was to embarrass the Raiders. And did you notice this? The NFL released some emails on Friday. Then they released more emails to the New York Times yesterday. They were going to keep releasing emails with John Gruden's name on it, okay, until they fired him. They did not want him in any way, in any way suspended. They wanted him gone. That's the story. The NFL used the Washington, and by the way, this is not over yet. Because the Daniel Snyder emails have to be released. I mean, you're taking the cheerleaders from the Washington team down to the Bahamas, and you're having sex with your clients from FedEx, from all the other people, Papa John's, all those people. Those are still to come out yet. And what's ESPN's accountability? So you got an employee in your house, John Gruden, going around and trashing People like Colin Kaepernick, I don't care what you think of Kaepernick's ability. He's going around dogging and trashing Colin Kaepernick to NFL executives as a member of ESPN. That right there in a nutshell, you notice ESPN has been awful quiet. And look at the people that are barking about John Gruden. They're all African-American. What white guy's barking at John Gruden? They're using Keyshawn Johnson and others in the building to bark at John when they really don't know the background to this. The NFL is knee-deep in this. Very few people know the story. There's a major backdrop to this. More heads are going to roll over this. So the NFL, when they're vetting, watch this. So you've been investigating Daniel Snyder now for four years. But John Gruden was hired in that process. The NFL had emails with John Gruden dropping the N-bomb and all of this other stuff, and all of a sudden now they're holier than thou? Yeah, here's the emails on John. There's your story. My question does come out, why now? Oh, wait, that's right, DeMora Smith was voted on whether or not to remain as the executive director of the Players Association on Friday. What came out on Friday? The emails. This all was wrapped around DeMora Smith's election or re-election to the NFL Association. He was on shaky ground because the players didn't like the way, and many of the players in the league didn't like the way he was handling it because they thought he was in bed. Gene Upshaw was never in bed with Roselle. There's your story. Only one place you'll get that. You won't get this on ESPN, Fox, because they have relationships with the NFL. Remember, they're business partners with the NFL. They know some of this stuff. Like, look at ESPN. What's their accountability in this? All right. I got to take a timeout because we have Jason Cole coming up. Okay? I want to get Jason's spin on it. 